Jules, do you think there are any moves going on behind the scenes with La Liga and at Barcelona to actually try and reverse all of this and ensure that Messi does stay on? Yeah, I really thought, Kay. I thought until an hour ago when, when too many people were telling me, you know, he's going to go to Paris. He's decided that he wants to play for PSG. And I think if Messi decides, I want to join PSG, I want to go and play with Neymar and Paredes and Di Maria, three of his best friends, this is where I want to go. I, I just there's no there's no stopping him now. PSG will find an agreement, a full agreement very soon with his father. They're going to meet in Nice over the weekend or maybe on Monday and this is going to happen and I think now it's too late. I really thought that La Liga could not afford to lose Messi and that at some point Javier Tebas had to do something. I really didn't think that Laporta would almost give up so easily in a way on Leo Messi and yet I think it's, 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 it's really happening now. But I, yeah, I really thought something would change very quickly and another U-turn but in the other way for him to be able to stay in Barcelona. And if it is really happening, Frank, does it make PSG instant favourites for the Champions League? Of course, of course. But you, you cannot deny that Manchester City will compete very, uh, very hardly. And, uh, and Bayern Munich also. Uh, Liverpool is going to be back, uh, just to please TV, but uh, I really think so. Uh, Chelsea is going to defend uh, uh, their title. So uh, there will be other clubs. And uh, the front line is absolutely fantastic. But I still... Uh, and like uh, Stevie, I still uh, have question marks about the uh, the middle of the park, where where the the midfield zone is not uh, completed by a real uh, uh, midfield defender for me, and it's been the the real problem uh, for almost a decade for for Paris Saint Germain. But they of course have all the players because don't forget Akim uh, um, Akimi came, Ramos is there, Donnarumma is there, so it's it's a fantastic squad. Um, if they, I don't know if they're going to find the chemistry. But it's, it, it's fantastic. And, uh, and let's see how it works. I just want to go back to Barcelona. Uh, yes, it's a catastrophe right now. But let's see a little bit further within, within maybe two, three, four years. You, where you have the emergence, emergence of uh, some new players like Ricky Puig, Pedri, uh, Ansu Fati. Maybe it's a time to collapse for Barcelona. Maybe also for La Liga because we see that we, we're at the end of a cycle for Real Madrid to maybe see a rebirth. At the end of the day, we all agree to see that a team cannot be built uh, around a star uh, because we saw that the last three or four winners, four winners of the, of the Champions League have been uh, teams and not uh, a star around, uh, surrounded by, by, uh, by, uh, by, by a team. So maybe it's a time for Barcelona to think, you know, differently. Stopping spending money like crazy for Griezmann, Dembélé and others. Maybe see the youth, try to work that way and recreate what, how Barcelona was born by young players uh, getting into a philosophy of football. That's how Barcelona got big and that's maybe the time to, uh, to do that. Can you see that being a bright side there, Jürgen, then, in that they do have to look forward now and they do have to have, as Frank saying, something of a rebirth? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I, I think it's not over yet. You know, we still have to wait a couple of days because even if they're in talks now with Paris or Germain, I mean, it's talks, you know, so, so like anything can happen there as well. You know, they can walk out of the room and, you know, and the whole thing blows up and they start from uh, zero on again. And so let, let's see how it all plays out in, in terms if he really leaves or not. But it is definitely an opportunity for, for any, any team that loses a big player is to kind of rebuild um, their philosophy and, and refocus on what really kind of made that club uh, so big. And as Frank said rightfully, I mean, Barcelona was built on the Cruyff philosophy, um, the, the, the total football philosophy um, with an amazing amount of movement of the ball, uh, the passing uh, and, the, and the dribbling skills and, and, the, te and the, the, their own academy. Their own academy brought out all those players one at a time and created that amazing club over the last 20, 25 years that we all admire. So, you know, if now obviously the big, big, uh, um, yeah, leader and, and uh, the head figure um, leaves uh, potentially Barcelona, that is the moment to, to rethink this whole strategy and, you know, get not only the club into, into order financially, but also from a philosophical point of view, you know, get them back on track, what they really kind of stand for. And, uh, and that was the Croy philosophy.
Uh, Stevie, where do you stand on that? Because there's still a lot of good players left at Barcelona. Obviously, none of them are ever going to be Lionel Messi. But you've got, as was mentioned, Pedri coming through. Well, I'm saying coming through. He's already mm. made his mark there. Antoine Griezmann, this could change everything for him. What do you think of Barca without Messi? Uh, this is a toss of a coin, whether they'll sink or swim. Yes, the likes of Pedri, uh, they're fantastic players. But when you have a reputation that Barcelona have, and that reputation is being put on, A, the young players straight away, and a guy who just hasn't produced, and a guy who more than likely will be under the mo most pressure, uh, and Antoine Griezmann. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.